How do you become a coastal grandmother? This is the question on everyone's minds this last summer as the trend has become all the rage. I'm Kate, I'm your practical style guide. I break down fashion to make it easy. Now I personally just started calling myself a coastal grandmother and went along with this new core aesthetic because it worked so seamlessly with my wardrobe. I was already wearing all the right colors. I was already wearing all the linen and carrying my basket bags around. There was just no transition for me to become a coastal grandmother. But with autumn creeping in, how do you take this new aesthetic into fall and winter and even to spring? I mean, the obvious answer would be to move to Cape Cod and buy a very expensive cottage that's probably been passed down for generations. But you can also achieve coastal grandmother status with your style, and I am going to show you how to do that. What is a coastal grandmother? I think the easiest way to answer this question is to look at literally any Nancy Myers movie ever created. Her color palettes, everything is just very coastal, clean, simple. And I think that is honestly what a coastal grandmother aesthetic is. You could definitely lump coastal grandmother in with preppy or even old money aesthetic, but I think the main difference is, is with preppy, you're going to get some of those like louder statement pieces, some of those brighter colors, some patterns, whereas coastal grandmothers keep things clean and simple and kind of minimalist. With old money aesthetic, you're going to find more pieces that whisper luxury. You're going to get heels, expensive handbags, blazers, that sort of thing. The coastal grandmother is a lot more simple than that. And is coastal grandmother minimalism? No. The coastal grandmother is more into earthy, light tones. The minimalist might wear black. A coastal grandmother will keep things beige. While the minimalist is all about those clean lines, a coastal grandmother would put something on that's like looser, flowier, more organic. That's why you'll see a lot of natural fibers like cotton, rattan, linen. So here are 10 essential coastal grandmother pieces in every single season. That is, yes, that is 40 pieces of clothing <laughs> to become a coastal grandmother. But I will say that so many of these pieces can be interchanged throughout all seasons. Most of them work so well together in a capsule wardrobe. Honestly, the 40 pieces that I have for you, if you can check them off your list, you will never want for another item of clothing. I personally love putting together capsules. I think it's really fun. And Coastal Grandmother is just an aesthetic that I'm absolutely in love with. With all that in mind, here are the top 10 summer essentials for the Coastal Grandmother. Yes, a straw hat is something the Coastal Grandmother will be wearing in the summer. Some might argue that she would trade in for a bucket hat, but I personally think that she's had this old straw thing laying around for years and she's gonna carry this with her all throughout her garden. It has more sun protection, it's practical, and it's timeless. The next most likely thing that she'll be sporting is a linen button-up shirt. Maybe it's her husband's, you just casually threw it on, it's draped over whatever else she's wearing. It keeps her arms protected from the UV light, it's breezy, and it's only gotten more comfortable with wear. And she's probably pairing them with matching linen pants or pleated shorts. Remember, the coastal grandmother is a grandmother after all, and she's probably sporting things that would have been around in the days of her youth. I personally love linen pants. I am a huge advocate of the trousers for the pear-shaped girls just like me. I think they're a great way to stay cool in the summer without having to wear shorts, but the Coastal Grandmother's shorts are definitely pair appropriate as well as they're probably a little bit longer, maybe some Bermudas, but yeah, they definitely are a little bit more elevated, probably have a pleat to them. They're not your regular shorts. The basket bag is another item that the Coastal Grandmother will be likely sporting throughout her garden. She'd be probably gathering, I don't know, some goodies for her grandkids to can later in the fall, who knows. But the basket bag is definitely another essential. On days when she's not wearing her linen shirt, she's probably wearing a striped tee of some sort. It wouldn't be coastal without a blue and white stripe. Another accessory on this list is the classic ascot or neck scarf. I love the idea 
idea that our gardening coastal grandmother is just wearing this scarf that she's had for years and it's keeping the sweat out of her eyes or something. I don't know. But I, I personally love like kind of the vintage vibe. I wear my neck scarves all the time and I think one in a lovely classic pattern can last you for years. It just works. For shoes, she's wearing a comfortable pair of sandals. My go-to is a pair of Birkenstocks. I know Crocs have been on the rise, but if our coastal grandmother was going out to dinner or something, she'd probably be spotted in some kind of like neutral toned classic sandals. Now to finish off the look for numbers 9 and 10 if you've been keeping track, our coastal grandmother is going to need a pair of sunglasses, maybe some like vintage 60s, a white pair or something like that, and a pair of pearl earrings. Now while the coastal grandmother style is more adjacent to other styles, in summer I think fall is where the style starts to really depart and become its own. I know there's that old rule, don't wear white after Labor Day, but your coastal grandmother isn't listening to that advice and neither am I. I think it's really stunning and elegant to wear white in the winter. And so even as we depart from the summer season, we're not straying from those light coastal colors. The first item on our list is a cotton button down, very similar to the linen button down, just a sturdier, heavier material. I personally love throwing it over a turtleneck. A light white knit turtleneck is the second item on our list. I'm not talking about like a thick chunky sweater yet. I'm talking about like a base layer turtleneck, good for layering. There's a really really good example of it in a Nancy Myers movie. I think this is very fall coastal grandmother. As much as I love my basket bags, I usually put them away during the fall. I think a canvas tote is a really good substitute. The coastal grandmother will also probably want to go for something a little bit more heavier duty than a linen trouser, which is why I've added chinos or just regular beige trousers to the list. Another fall staple is the cardigan. You can either choose one kind of like this, I get compliments on this one all the time, or I think even more coastal grandmother would probably be like your traditional long beige cardigan. Just something that she would throw on over top of her classic cotton button down <laughs> or her other other shirt option, which would be a plain white tee, which she could wear any season, let's be real. For our shoe options this season, we're bringing in white sneakers and clogs. Hear me out before I get into the clogs. So white sneakers, we're talking like Keds or something really classic, just like subtle lace-up sneakers, nothing chunky, nothing like a dad shoe or whatever, like your plain classic white sneaker. Clogs are kind of growing in popularity right now. I know there's kind of like this like ugly Birkenstock-esque clog. I love Birkenstock so no hate to the clog. They're a little bit more structured than a croc. I think there are some really stunning options. By the way, everything that I'm talking about will be listed on my blog. I even have a few of my favorites that I've picked out for each category just to give you an idea of what to look for. I'm not gonna lie, I was gonna place a Chelsea boot in this category, but our grandmother is coastal. She's not experiencing the PNW winters or even the prairie winters that I experience all the time. She's gonna be keeping things a little bit more summery. The accessory that we're gonna add in this season are plain small gold hoops. I have this really stunning delicate pair from Linear I think is a really good option. Like our coastal grandmother is not wearing big hoop earrings. I'm talking about like little ones that are basically like studs. For our final fall item, we are bringing in a pair of denim. I think a classic mom jean pair will do. They're called mom jeans for a reason. <laughs> I think the silhouette is really Really great on anyone. They don't get in your way like flares or wide leg pants do. And let's be real, she's probably had them for years. <laughs> now for winter coastal grandmother, I had to do a lot more digging. And really for me, the most inspiration that I could find was my favorite Nancy Myers film, The Holiday. And while our coastal grandmother may not be experiencing some of the harsh winters that we do here in Alberta, she does want to stay cozy. I mean, really the key is just keeping those colors light neutral and texture is more organic. So for our winter lineup, we're bringing in the brown leather handbag. I don't think our coastal grandmother would have something as harsh like a black, but I do think a brown leather handbag is sturdy and light enough for winter. One item that I own that I immediately thought 
of when designing a coastal grandmother winter capsule was my light beige tartan scarf. It's wool I got it in Scotland, it's super warm, and I think the coastal grandmother would bring this with her everywhere. It's the perfect color. I am trying to find a good dupe, so if I have found one, it will be in the blog post. Our coastal grandmother is going into winter with two sweaters, an old school crew neck, think Diana off duty, probably with her old school's logo on it or something, as well as like a really luxurious chunky knit. Think Cameron Diaz in the holiday. Something that you just like know is like cashmere or merino wool. Our coastal grandmother's coat is also inspired by Cameron Diaz's outfit in the holiday. Something more of a classic silhouette, probably a, a wool coat with a tie belt. I thought about adding a puffer jacket to this, but I think that we want to keep things more elevated, a little bit more coastal. I feel like a puffer jacket is more like Midwest or PNW. Remember how I said I wanted to bring in the Chelsea boots for fall, but decided not to? Well, we're bringing them in for winter, as well as some duck boots. I think duck boots are kind of like a classic coastal fall winter staple. You see them a lot on New England blogger KJP, and I think they're just overall really practical. The Chelsea boots are basically a classic in winter form. Definitely a classic. I thought really hard about a second jacket option and I think something like a quilted jacket would be really stunning. I kind of picture in my mind like an actual quilt jacket. I've seen them before. I think they're really beautiful. You can find them on Etsy but I could just see our coastal grandmother whipping something up like that for herself in maybe like a delicate light like, blue color. I'm full-on fantasizing about this coat. I want it in my wardrobe. <laughs> and we of course need to finish off our winter look with our winter accessories we need wool gloves and a wool hat. I debated whether or not our coastal grandmother is fancy enough to pull off a beret or if that's a little too old money so I actually think a bucket hat a wool bucket hat would be the right way to go in this case. I mean at this point we have a list of 30 items to round out your coastal grandmother wardrobe. I wasn't really sure where to go from here especially since spring utilizes so many pieces from fall and summer. So these 10 pieces aren't really so much as they are spring specific but just 10 extra pieces that would really push your coastal grandmother wardrobe to the next level. I feel like we could really do for another pair of trousers probably like a white pair since we already have a beige pair maybe like the ones I'm wearing right now. <laughs> I know we already have a white turtleneck on the list but I think we need another white shirt maybe like a white turtleneck tee or a white sleeveless turtleneck. There's just something about a white sleeveless turtleneck that that just screams like coastal to me. For our three more layering pieces, I have a poplin button up. I know it's pretty much the same as a cotton and a linen button up, but you can never have too many button ups and I think your coastal grandmother would have all three. And then a vest, I think a quilted vest in particular in like a light color would be really stunning to add as well as my favorite, a trench coat. I think really a trench coat fits so well into so many different aesthetics. It's such a great basic, especially for spring. And with that in mind, I think rain boots, a good one to add. They don't necessarily need to be like your classic high hunters but maybe even just like a short ankle boot similar to a duck boot but a little bit more spring vibes something that you could definitely do some gardening in loafers of course are our last pair of shoe again these are such a good staple for pretty much any wardrobe but particularly the coastal grandmother i think she'd probably be seen in maybe like a penny loafer in a light brown color you could always trade these out as well for boat shoes which i mean would it be a coastal stylist if I didn't include boat shoes? And for the rest of our accessories, we have a ball cap, but particularly I think in either a white or even I have one that's rattan. I am absolutely obsessed with it. I love it. I'll try to find a do. And then on our list, we have a watch. I think our coastal grandmother would definitely own a watch, but probably ignore it a lot of the time. Like, let's be real. She's not waiting until five to have that glass of wine. And if she's out gardening, she's losing all track of time. So yeah, that's the full list. Essentially, my hope is that with all these pieces, you can become a coastal grandmother year-round. I personally love this style because I think it makes a really cohesive capsule wardrobe without having to own a ton of different pieces. I mean, as you saw, I struggled, I think, to get 40 without naming a ton of accessories and everything like that. So if you're looking to stick to one aesthetic year-round, I think this one is actually pretty doable. If you'd like me to break down and do a capsule wardrobe for other aesthetics, please let me know in the 
comments. I'd be happy to do that. I think this is really fun. <laughs> and if you thought this video was fun, please give it a like. It means a lot to me. And follow for more practical style tips.